Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Kent for Thursday, March 25th, 2021. Brought to you by the great people at today's dentistry. Dr. Mike O'Neill, the best dentist that there is. Call him. Finally, once and for all, take control of your dental health. 317-849-2933. Hit subscribe, like, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Let's go. Let's talk about sports yesterday. The Colts did what everybody expected they were going to do. They re-signed T.Y. Hilton. One year, $10 million bucks. You knew it was going to be in the area of $10 million bucks for one year or two years. And, and the guarantees were going to shift a little bit. I thought it might be two years, $20 million, $16 million guaranteed. This is a one-year deal. If T.Y. Hilton proves healthy and productive and wants to come back, I'm sure the door is open for another deal just like this one next year. So... It, it, people are getting a little bit impatient with Chris Ballard and the Indianapolis Colts, but let's look at the boxes that he has checked this offseason. Very, very quietly, oddly enough, and I don't know why it's been so quiet, but there's still people who are like, hey, what are we doing? It's supposed to be a Super Bowl contending team. This doesn't look like a Super Bowl contending team. Are we any better than we were last year? You know what? It's March 25th. If this was... August 30th, I get it. We, who are you going to bring off the edge to rush a quarterback? Do you have a tight end who's a legitimate threat? You know, you, you got questions. I get it, but here are the boxes that have been checked. All right, your starting quarterback. You went out and got a starting quarterback who was playing at an MVP level four years ago and played really, really well in 18 and 19 and may have been unfairly blamed for what went on with the Philadelphia Eagles in 2020. Uh, a, a real convenient scapegoat was Carson Wentz. You go out, you get Carson Wentz, 28 years old. In his prime, physically, if he can stay healthy, you got a guy who may be able to lead you to a Super Bowl like he did with the, the Eagles when he built that 11-2 and record as a starter back in 17. All right, your number two wide receiver. The box is checked. T.Y. Hilton. Now, Michael Pittman has got to develop into that number one wide receiver, or you've got to go find that guy. I don't think that the Colts at this point are going to go find that guy. There aren't a lot of number one wide receivers available in free agency, and when they are, they go very quickly, and they are almost always overpaid, as was Sammy Watkins three years ago by the Kansas City Chiefs when they gave him three years, $48 million bucks. Did he produce at that level? No, he did not. He visited with the Colts yesterday. We'll see if they wind up signing him. It may have been an either-or deal. Either we get T.Y. Hilton back or we sign Sammy Watkins. But that number two wide receiver spot filled by T.Y. Hilton. Backup tackle. They got Sam Tevy. All right. He started at left tackle last year for the Los Angeles Chargers. He is a quality backup. He can play both sides. He's a swing tackle. They really needed that guy. They still need a starting tackle, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, you need an edge guy. That box has not been checked. You need that starting left tackle. That box has not been checked. You need a tight end weapon that Jim Irsay alluded to last week. And normally I wouldn't put this in the box where you, you required the check. But it, 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 Jim Irsay was pretty adamant last week that when... The Colts got Dallas Clark last year. All of a sudden, their offense really started to click. I think they wind up with Zach Ertz. I think it's going to come after the Philadelphia Eagles cut him, which they're going to be forced to do because there's not a trade partner for him. Who's good. They understand that the Eagles are in a position where they're likely to cut Ertz. So why, why give up draft equity when you don't have to and you can just come in, swoop in, and, and kind of score that free agent signing once he becomes a free agent. The Colts, right now, they got a lot of cap space. According to SpotRack.com, they have right now $41 million under the cap. That's ranked second in the NFL. They are in a position to come in, swoop up lots of guys in free agency. This is not the roster that they're going to enter camp with, whether it's in Grand Park or on West 56th Street. This is not their roster. Take a deep breath. This is like, this. I said this yesterday, it's like building a pool in the, in the backyard. You get impatient about it when the company's out and they're digging in the backyard and, and they're laying the, the concrete and all of that. When is our pool going to be ready? It's March. It doesn't matter if the pool's ready. It's just an expensive hole in the backyard in March. 
in June. That's when you want the pool ready. That's true in the NFL, too. We want that roster to be ready to go once training camp opens. Don't need a great roster on March 25th. It doesn't count. Games won't be played for another five and a half months. Take a deep breath. Do it with me. <sighs> it's going to be fine. All right. Uh, news out of Indiana yesterday, not in terms of the new head coach. However, two more players have enter entered the transfer portal. Parker Stewart never played a game. Transferred to Indiana, and, and we never saw him on the floor, and now he's in the transfer portal and he may leave. That's the way it goes. And Race Thompson may leave also, entering his senior year. Uh, he may go someplace else. And, you know, I here's the thing. I got a note from a, a friend yesterday asking, why don't players every year enter the transfer portal? I don't have a good answer for that. If you were a college basketball player, would you not enter the transfer portal every single year? And if you wouldn't, why wouldn't you? Why not put your name out there and see if somebody calls and says, hey, we'd like you to come, especially if you're a grad-eligible transfer, which Race Thompson is going to be. Why would you not but, uh, kind of put yourself out there and say, call me? Why not? It, it's kind of like if, if you've got a job, and it's a good job, could you not get a better job potentially? Would it not be wise for you? to say to prospective employers, hey, I'm out here, give me a call, let's see. You know what, there's such a thing as loyalty, but in college basketball, you get four years, or in some cases with COVID, you get five years. You've got to use them wisely. And, and if there's somebody out there where maybe it would be a better fit, and especially when Indiana doesn't have a head coach, you have no idea what the fit's going to be like for the program, and how you're going to be utilized as a player. Why would you not put your name in the portal and see who uh, makes your phone ring? In the meantime, if a coach comes along and you dig him, you know what? You can pull your name out of the portal. It's just that simple. What is Scott Dolson doing? We're 10 days into this coaching search, and we're getting wacky, right? Fans are losing their minds. We don't know who the coach is going to be, and we don't even know, like, a list of, every day the list grows. The, the number of people that we're willing to look at, and it's going to grow again this weekend. If Oral Roberts somehow makes the Final Four, the coach of Oral Roberts is going to be a candidate for this job. I don't know who he is, although I did hear him on the Dan Dockett show the other day, and he was terrific. I can't remember his name. That's the way it goes. I'm not worried about buyouts. Look, if you're willing to spend $10.5 million on a buyout to make a coach go away, I got to believe you're willing to spend $12 million to get a coach to come. And that's a deal with Nate Oates at Alabama. I'm not, look, whatever the financial repercussions are of this coaching search, who you get is too important to let $12 million get in the way. The buyout's too huge to go get Nate Oates. Why? Who says that? What kind of of a, a strong-thinking, blue-ribbon, uh, unbelievable, uh, you know, one of these blue-blood programs thinks, well, we, we can't afford that. We could afford $12 million to push a guy off a cliff, but we're not going to be able to afford $12 million to go get the guy who would be right for this job if somehow Archie Miller or uh, Scott Dolson decides that uh, Nate Oates is right for the job. I'm not worried about $12 million. It's not my money. Somebody's going to write a check for a buyout if we hire a coach who's already got a job in all likelihood. Some guys don't have buyouts. Some guys do. We'll see what Dolson does. He's interviewing guys. Who's he going to land on? We have no earthly idea. Um, he's doing something down there, though. He is methodical. This is This is the word that has been used to describe him to me by people in the Indiana Athletic Department. He is methodical, so this is going to take time, and he's right to take his time because getting this right is absolutely critical for him to remain in that position. If we're back here in four years saying, hey, you know what, this guy sucks too. Now it's been nine years since we've been to an NCAA tournament, God forbid. Dolson's a ghost. Forget it. 
he's got to get this right. If it takes an extra week, two weeks, month, go ahead. Take your time. Get it right. It's way too important. This is the most important hire that Scott Dolson's ever going to make. So take a deep breath. Keep grinding. Move through the process. Land on the right person. Hey, speaking of that, Indiana briefly, the Indiana women. They moved on to the Sweet 16 yesterday, first time in the program history. They beat Belmont, and they beat them badly. Now they've got NC State. NC State, the one seed in their region. They play Saturday, I think 6 o'clock. This is a fun team to watch. I dig it. They move the ball. They defend like rabid dogs. They're fantastic. I really enjoy watching the IU women. Had a good time watching that on uh, ESPN. Uh, you yesterday. Terrific game from San Antonio. Although I got to tell you, the lighting in whatever gym they were at, not good. Not TV ready lighting for that. It, the, not good where it came to uh, workout facilities for the women and the men. That comparison, the facilities that the women are using in San Antonio, that one yesterday, the lighting sucked for TV. Uh, Pacers, a win last night. They they snapped their six-game losing streak at home, longest since Michael Jordan was a rookie in the NBA. They beat the Pistons 116-111. Karis LeVert, terrific last night, 28 points, a step back three with 4.7 seconds left. Kind of sealed the deal. It was a fun game to watch, and Karis LeVert was terrific. Edmund Sumner was awesome. First half of the fourth quarter. Really, really good. Put the Pacers in a position to win that game. Aaron Holiday didn't play last night. His second DNP of the season. First one was one of the games in Miami, the back-to-back that just concluded uh, not a week ago. Aaron Holiday may be moved today. Trade deadline day in the NBA. Always a lot of fun. We'll see what happens with the Pacers roster. Pacers still beneath 500, kind of in that nether region between buyer and seller. They may move a piece like Aaron Holiday, build some draft equity, may get a guy back. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Uh, But it's going to be an interesting day all the way around. A lot of guys are going to be moved in the NBA. This is the year to do it. You don't have a lot of fans in the arenas, if any, in places. And so moving guys may not have the kind of deleterious effect on your gate that it normally would or might not give you the lift in terms of gate that it normally would. Uh, you've got Dallas and Washington on the road starting tomorrow night, and then again, Washington on Monday. So Dallas tomorrow, Washington Monday. Let's celebrate some birthdays, shall we? Yesterday was gorgeous. What a beautiful day. Nice. March, in like a lion, out like a lamb. I don't really know what that means, but yesterday it was like 73 and sunny. So that's good. Uh, it, it's, it's going out like 73 and sunny. We like that. Ted Spurgeon, happy birthday. The great Matt Hummel, celebrating a birthday. Ricky Eicholtz, celebrating a birthday. If you ever went to Ike and Jonesy's, you know Rick Eicholtz. Uh, Tom Gahan, happy birthday. The great Gabe Hobbs, celebrating a birthday. Craig Lyle, Arnold Simkus, happy birthday. Melissa Junk, and Travis Ham, happy birthday. If today's your birthday, you celebrate like hell. If it's not your birthday, you celebrate somebody else. That's best done with an honest and specific compliment. Or more Hoosiers going to hit the transfer portal. Is Scott Dolson going to finally land on a coach? How about the Colts? What are they going to do? The Pacers at the trade deadline is Aaron Holiday going to be a former Pacer? And how's that going to affect his brother? I don't think at all. We'll find out later today. And we'll share that information with you inside Indiana Sports Now with Ken Sterling. Can't wait to talk to you then right about that, 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon. Have a great day. Lift each other. Right? Don't pull each other down. Let's go. Celebrate like hell. If it's your birthday, celebrate somebody else if it's not. 364 days a year, we ought to be celebrating somebody else.